first of all, I, I think a point here is a very, very good point. So I, I want to make that abundantly clear before maybe I go on to uh, a couple of other things that went on. The, uh, the evening was a very, very difficult one. Conditions were abominable, um, tough for both teams. It made the field really difficult to deal with. Um, and then, of course, with a, with a break in play, you've got to try and, you know, get yourself back into gear. What I saw was a very even game. Um, two sides that were a goal threat. Um, two teams that had opportunities and, and didn't convert probably as well as they both would have liked. But in all honesty, the biggest decision in the game was not given our way. And that moment probably cost us a game in the end. So as, as happy as I am with a point, I'm also as disappointed about, um, you know, some of the choices and the interpretations that are made. Uh, I just don't understand, you know, having seen the replay now, how that cannot be given as a penalty. I just don't understand it. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with Tim Sullivan for Club and Country and then go down the road. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, Gary, not just the uh, couple of penalty shouts there that Hani had, but it seemed like he was taking a beating um, a lot in this game. What did you see about that? And did you kind of communicate with the officials at all about, you know, what you thought you were seeing out there? Well, the crazy thing is that when we have a lot of the competition stuff come around before the season, you know, the, the, the talented, creative players on every team are a bit of a target. You, you can understand that. But the league, understandably, are trying to clamp down on that, make, make life, I don't want to say easier for those players, but certainly make it harder for some of the more destructive elements to put them out of their stride. I would, I would hazard a guess that 75% of the time, if not more, that Hanny was manhandled or overpowered that the referee deemed that he was actually instigating it or had tried to buy a foul. Now, it, we're back to interpretation again. The conditions were not good for anyone. It lent itself to hard working and, and, and determined players, but there were definitely moments for both of, of, of really what you would call the creative stars on the field. You know, Hanny had, had opportunities and really should have um, been given a moment to, to score from the penalty spot and, and, and you know, underline a, a very determined display from him. And, and likewise, Renoso at the other end, you know, lots and lots of good things going on. But I, I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted at some of the decisions that are made. I really am. I'm, I, truly, you, you can't even begin to imagine how just, mentally lost I am sitting here right now. Thank you, Coach. Next, we'll go back to Tim Sullivan. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, Gary, um, I asked you on a positive note about this last week, negative note this week, uh, set piece, concession there. What did you see on that play? Uh, it's a free kick that shouldn't be given away by Alex Mule. He, he, he dives in. Uh, it's just really poor defending. Um, it's a tough area. Uh, you know, we gave them the opportunity at the edge of the box. The guy connects well. Um, it's the lesser of the evils. He gets a, you know, really nice, um, you know, run of the ball, if you like, and they get another stab at it. And, you know, in these conditions and when, and when you're lucks in, that's what happens. But, look, uh, you know, I think we've defended... Um, you know, the vast majority of dead balls in a much, much better fashion. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy with where we're going with that. Most importantly, the mentality of the group. Um, slightly different situation down by the dead ball line there, but still, nevertheless, second phase, and, and it's, it's disappointing. Next, we we'll go to Ben Wright with Broadway Sports Media. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, Gary, obviously the conditions got worse and worse as the night went on, which it made it harder to play. But what did you make of, of the initial combination between CJ and Hani for, for the goal? Um, I, I, listen, there's some, some really decent play. Um, I, I thought we had opportunities that we didn't actually take advantage of. The amount of times that 
we failed to to clear their back line or to find a ball that you know worked around their back line was was astounding really but may, maybe the the footing on the field I'm you know giving everyone the benefit of the doubt there but um yeah a re really nice combination great to see um you know the pair of them working together and and putting themselves in in such a positive position but you know CJ's got off the mark wonderful um you know we've spoken about uh, the goal from CJ and and um, and Hanny, Harry should have got a penalty. Harry's made a goal. But I've got to say, I thought Randall was very very bright tonight. He, he looked a real threat. He you know was a thorn in their side for for pretty much most of the evening. And again, you know, but for maybe a little bit more of uh, you know a, a, a clinical edge in front of goal or in and around the goal, he may have had a little bit more joy. Next, we'll go to Tim Sullivan and Claudia Villalobos. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, Gary, I, uh, I was just hanging out in here all by myself. What did you guys do during the lightning delay? And um, kind of what was your, uh, I guess, communication from the facility staff as it unfolded as to how long you would have to wait? It is tough, you know, especially when you're away from home. Um, you know, we got the initial shout of 30 minutes, and then I think there was an immediate strike again, which set the clock, reset it. And then I, I want to say we, we got within 15 minutes of going out and there was another strike. Anyway, all in all, um, the guys can only try and stay, you know, as, as sort of engaged as possible. Um, you know, some stretching, some, some minor activities when they know that they're going to start to get themselves back out onto the field. Um, you know, it, it, it is very tough when you're the away team. You've got a limited amount of area, which is why... You know, we got out early. I have to presume that they've got an area underneath the building here somewhere that they can use. And, uh, you know, they've taken advantage of that, which is, is part and parcel of being at home, I guess. But I, I just thought we came out a bit sluggish mentality. Maybe, you know, give them some credit as well. They, they got on the front foot. I said to the guys in the locker room that, you know, unfortunately now there's a 30 minute game just over. And you've got to expect that they're going to really come after it. And they did exactly that and got their reward. Go ahead, Claudia. Claudia? All right, we'll circle back. We'll go to Ben Wright and Drake Hills. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, Gary, I'm just, I'm, I wanted to get your, your take on, on what you view kind of Ake Loba's role in the team right now on this road stretch. Obviously, he's come off the bench the, the last two matches, but just where do you see him fitting in right now? Well, first and foremost, the guys that uh, are getting the, the brunt of the attacking work done have, have, have looked bright and purposeful. Um, his form in preseason was definitely a, a step in the right direction. Would I say it's exactly where we want it to be? Absolutely not. And he realises that as well. But we're in a much, much better place. The tough thing on days like today and certainly on occasions where, you know, in Seattle, we're playing well. Um, the, the, the dynamic and the balance of the group is such. I mean, yes, he's going to be a real asset for the group, I believe. But we go through some, you know, quite unique circumstances right now. And, you know, to get the balance just right and to keep earning points out of this stretch is not easy. So expect there to be some rotation down the line, I'm sure. Um, you know, when he's called upon to come into the game, he looks engaged, he's training well. And whenever the opportunity comes along, I'm expecting him to have a right go at it and try and hold that place down. Go ahead, Drake. We'll wrap up the session with Coach Smith with you. Thanks, Matt. Um, Gary, I wanted to know just at any time, whether at the start of the delay or you know, maybe at the end when guys were starting to warm up, did you have any uh, communication with, with the groundskeepers and just getting an understanding of what the, what the field conditions were like or were you just up to just having your own eyeballs um, make the decision for yourself? Yeah, we, we, we don't have any contact with the groundsmen, Drake. Not away from home, mate. No, we... we... We walk out on the field and we get going. And that's it. You know, the, the conditions were dreadful, the field. Uh, I spoke to Adrian before and he said, you know, the field's been under snow for large portions of, of uh, the pre-season period. So, you know, you can understand that it's not going to be perfect at this point. I mean, 
the start of the game, I thought it was was in pretty good shape, especially given the, the climate in, in Minnesota in the winter. But um, it, it certainly took a, a pounding and started to cut up quite nicely. 